Good morning, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. In this last Sunday in Ordinary Time, we are celebrating the solemnity of Christ the King of the Universe. This solemnity was instituted in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. At that time, the world was still trying to recover from World War I, which devastated Europe and shattered modern modernity's hope for unlimited progress. The Pope saw human societies abandoning Christian values and trying to build paradise on earth through other means. Also, Christians at that time were doubting Christ's authority and many were doubting Christ's existence. Pope Pius XI have hope that instituting the Feast of Christ the King, the leaders and nations would see that they are bound to give respect to Christ, and that the faithful would gain strength and courage from the celebration of the Feast, as we are reminded that Christ must reign in our hearts, minds, and wills. Eva Crystal Ray, Hail King of the Universe. May we now stand and sing our entrance song. He did not have a crown of gold, but a crown of thorns. Christ is the King of truth and life, of holiness and grace, of justice and peace, of equality and love. As we prepare ourselves to honor our King, let us call to mind the times we fail to love. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, and we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God Almighty. God. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, 
for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty's service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep, as a shepherd tends his flock. When he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they are scattered. When it was cloudy and dark, I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out. The strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up. The sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end. When he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to, do, to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you fought me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those in his land, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill, and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you, do, what you did not do for one of these, these ones, you did not do for me. And this will go up to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, today is the last Sunday of the third of our liturgical year. We come to, to the close of, of our church calendar. And the thing of the judgment day, the end of time. It will surely come the end of time, but no one knows the exact time, the exact hour or day. Life on earth is the preparation of our life after. Therefore, live each day to the fullest. What you can do today, do it now, for tomorrow might not come. A well-known billionaire said these words before he died. So much wasted time. I want to be what I am. I want to love. The big question for us, have you wasted your time? Our readings tell us of three images of Christ the King. First, the shepherd, second, the risen Lord, and third, the judge of all nations. In the first reading, the Lord speaks to Ezekiel, telling the people that he is the shepherd caring for a sheep. He provides for all their needs and will judge between sheep and between rocks and goats. Paul writes to the Corinthians, telling them that as Christ has been raised from the dead, then so too in Christ shall all be brought to life. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells his disciples of the time when the Son of Man shall come in glory and sit upon the throne, separating the sheep from the goats. Now, where do you see yourself in the parable or in the story?
Can you identify yourself with the helpers on the right or the non-helpers on the left? There have been times when we have helped, we have given to charity, we have made donations to the church, some of which goes to help the poor. We have taken food baskets to the needy at Thanksgiving or in, during Christmas. All of us have done some of these things and more. But we also know that there have been other times when we have turned our backs and walked away. We have seen someone who needed our help and somehow have excused ourselves from giving the help. We cannot totally identify ourselves with either the helpers or the non-helpers. Sometimes we have been selfish, at other times we have been so generous. Sometimes we find ourselves really caring about people, at other times life is so terrible that we find ourselves absorbed by our own problems. So, we can honestly say that all of us are a little of all, and none of us is entirely either. What then is Jesus telling us, and what is that He wants us to do? Actually, there were three groups of people in the story, not just two. First, people who help. Second, people who refuse to help, and the third, people who need help. The last group is the one who have been overlooking. These are the people with whom Jesus chose to identify himself. He said to help them was to help him, and to neglect them was to neglect him. Jesus not only cared about the needy and sought to help the needy, but he also completely identifies himself with the needy. Their hunger was his hunger. Their loneliness was his loneliness. Their need was his need. The story is told about a Roman soldier, Martin of Tours. One whole day, as he was entering a city, a beggar stopped him and asked for alms. Martin had no money. And the beggar was shivering with cold. Martin took his cloth, cut it in two, and gave half of it to the beggar. That night in a dream, Martin saw Jesus wearing half of the hue of the Roman soldier's cloth. Asked where he got it, Jesus replied, My servant Martin gave it to me. The story illustrates Christ's words, Whatever you did to the least of my brethren, you did for me. My brothers and sisters, many Christians who believe that as long as they go to church, receive communion, and avoid evil, they are good people. They claim, I never do any harm to anyone. As long as you go to church, mind your own business, you are okay. We will become them for our finger to do something for the needy. We will be condemned not for anything we have done, but for things we have not done. I repeat, we will be condemned for things we have not done. It's not enough to be good. You must be good for something. The greatest evil in the world According to Mother Teresa of Calcutta, she said it beautifully. Many today are starving for ordinary bread, but there is another kind of hunger, the hunger to be wanted, to be loved, to be recognized. Nakedness too is not just the want of clothes, but also about the loss of dignity, purity, and self-respect. And homelessness is not just one of a house, 
There is homelessness of being rejected, of being unwanted in a throwaway society. The biggest disease in the world today is the feeling of being unwanted and uncared for. The greatest evil in the world is lack of love, the terrible indifference towards one's neighbor. So let us pray with her. Lord, warm our cold hearts with your grace, so that we, your disciples, may produce the fruits of love. Amen. Please stand together to confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten that made Constantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate, and rose again at the third day. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again at the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of death and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that the kingdom of God the Father is unfolding the world, with thankful hearts we make our prayer in union with Christ the King. We pray for our Holy Father and the bishops of the Church. Enable them in the carrying out of their duties to be signs of hope, and beacons of light to those trapped in the darkness of sin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our Lord, our praise. That leaders of governments may talk openly and face honestly the issues that divide them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our Lord. Our praise. For all those who are struggling in their faith during the pandemic, may they put their trust in the healing power of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the first responders and frontline care workers, may they be protected and strengthened with supernatural energy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the community in which we live, that we may spread the reign of Jesus Christ in acts of kindness and care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, the poor, the hungry, the stranger, and the prisoner, may they be filled with the knowledge of God's love for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, may they soon rejoice in the eternal kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We now pray silently for our own intentions and those held deep within our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, knowing your boundless love for all people, we confidently bring our intentions before you in the name of Christ, the universal King, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have the spread to offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. To your goodness, we have this point to offer you. For the divine work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God and Almighty Father. As we offer, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all the nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal praise and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule. He might descend to the immensity of your majesty, an eternal and an universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the name of your glorious without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed Holy, O Lord, and all we have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, of your sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Gracefully make holy these gifts we have brought to you through consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he sent the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Claim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the foundation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by his death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that you may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, High Mary Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen gracefully to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you, from their passing from this life, give kindness to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the age of the Holy Spirit, all glory now is yours forever and ever. Amen. Longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we now together pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look down on our sins from the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they called to the sock of the Lamb. Please join me saying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with Him eternally in His heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament and the consecration of the Blessed Sacrament, Consecration to Christ the King. I just would like to make this uh, announcement that uh, on Thursday, Thanksgiving, we will uh, also be uh, providing you with a celebration of the Mass in our YouTube channel. And I wish, I wish uh, a happy and blessed Thanksgiving to all of you, to your families. The Rectory or the House of the Priest here in our parish had been sold and moved last uh, Monday. And I just want to thank our finance council with the hard work of Anne and all for making this possible. So we have now a uh, vacant lot, but we are looking forward to making this. Uh, that uh, to be a beautiful place where everyone can come and visit and pray. So next Sunday will already be the first Sunday of Advent. So we look forward to celebrating, though we cannot come to church to celebrate together the Sundays of Advent. But uh, let us together uh, reflect and the different virtues of the four Sundays of Advent, love, faith, joy, and hope. And we can still make this uh, Advent a meaningful preparation for Christmas. Grace to 
call the path of holiness by imitating your virtues and completely showing our faith in you, so that all those around us will find in us authentic disciples of Christ. Place in our hearts the same zeal for the salvation of every single person that you have, that you had when you took flesh and when you died on the cross. Inflame our hearts, enlighten our minds, strengthen our soul, and lead us always along the path of fidelity and fear of man. Transform us from all fear and selfishness, strengthen our faith, and grant us the courage to respond with absolute fidelity to your call. Amen.